Hello folks and welcome to the channel or welcome back and in this episode we're going to look at caster. The definition of caster, what it is, what it does for us, what doesn't it do for us and how does it relate to your camber or the interworking with the kingpin inclination. Now I know this sounds like a lot of different things we need to talk about. It may also sound a bit complex but it isn't. By the end of the video you will really understand what this is all about. We will also then do some demonstrations and we go into measure and if necessary adjust the caster and the camber on one of the race cars just as a matter of an example. So without any further ado, let's start. What I have right here is what we call a caster wheel. So here is our caster wheel and you find those typically on the shopping carts and I'm sure you've been pushing them around in the shopping mall and you feel how wobbly these things are sometimes. And there's a very good reason for that because it's one of the parameters or the conditions or the behavior of a caster wheel. Caster can be positive, negative or neutral. So let's have a look at it. So here's our first example. We are having positive caster and the direction of the driving is towards that side. If I was to draw an imaginary line through the center of the wheel, vertical at 90 degrees to the ground surface, then I would have a touch point on the ground and that touch point we would call the wheel touch point. I could also draw a line through the center of the support system, which is this big tube here, and this is with this white stick. If I draw that, like so, then I see that my wheel touch point is behind my support touch point in the direction in which we are driving. And in this case, the wheels are trailing. And that's typical for positive casters. The wheels are trailing. In this situation, we have what we call negative caster. We're still traveling in that direction. Again, if I put an imaginary line through the center of the wheel, and another imaginary line through the center of the support system, you will notice that the wheel in the direction of the travel is now leading because the wheel touch point is in front of the support touch point. This is what we call the negative caster. So we've seen uh, what positive caster is, uh, that's where the wheel is trailing. We've seen what negative caster is, that's where the wheel is leading but there's also neutral caster and that's the condition whereby both imaginary lines are hitting the same spot on the ground. So the line straight through the center of the wheel and the line straight to the support uh, structure. If those are aligned with each other and they hit the same spot on the ground, then we have neutral caster. Now, in reality, I am not aware of any cars that have neutral caster or negative caster. All cars that I know of have positive caster between two to five degrees much depending on the suspension system that is fitted to your car. But if anybody of you knows where we use negative caster, I would really like to know. So please put it in the comments. Now that we know how we can define caster, let's have a look on the real car, if we can pinpoint out those lines and see if the car has positive or negative caster. So let's go. To find out where your caster line is, draw this imaginary line between the center of the top ball joint and the lower ball joint. Now this specific car is a double wishbone car, but it does, it's the same for a strut based car. So if I draw that line, something like this, you can actually see it's already leaning backwards towards the car. So we are having basically positive caster on this uh, car. If you look closely on the upright, you can actually see that as well, that it's actually leaning backwards. If we're going to look at the caster angle on this car, you're always looking from the sides. So we already had a quick look on the upper and lower ball joint and we know that this car is having a positive caster, like so. So this is my positive caster line. And my center of my wheel, hopefully I have this right a bit, is about there. So we can say that my wheel is actually trailing. 
how much the angle is is something we still have to measure. <laughs>
I'm going to quickly go through that. If you know this already, then don't worry about it. So most of the race cars are having what we call negative camber. So if these are the front wheels and they are pointing inwards like this, this is what we call negative camber. If they're pointing out, that's positive camber. So pretty straightforward, and there's a very good reason for that. So this is my left front wheel of the car, and we're having a certain amount of negative camber. So we're going to take a right-hand turn. So right-hander, as we call it. So if we do this, we know that the car will actually tilt towards the outside. So the weight is transferred from the inside to the outside. That also means that the outer suspension, which is this wheel here, will change. Now, when you corner, you want to have maximum grip of the tire on the surface, on the ground. We don't have this one. Now we have a very small patch. But because we have negative uh, camber on the car, what's going to happen is the suspension system will change its position because of the transfer of the weight. And the wheel will come like this, straight. And now we're going to have a full patch on the ground with maximum grip. We can actually do the same thing for the inner wheel. So if this was my inner wheel now, and I'm still taking the right hand turn, what's going to happen there is because the car is going to lift up on that side because everything is tilting over to the outside, the same thing is going to happen here on that wheel and we're going to get a maximum patch effect. The only drawback of camber is that, as you can probably already realize, is that once you do straight line driving, your wheels are inclined in a certain angle. That could be one, two degrees, whatever that is on your specific car. That means in straight line driving, you don't have the full touch patch on the tarmac, so you have less grip. But that's okay. In straight line driving, that is not much of an issue. It will reduce a little bit your braking efficiency. It will also reduce a bit your acceleration efficiency because the tire may slip a bit more. So that is why to, it's important to find a good compromise for how much camber you should have. So you want to have good cornering and to be very honest in racing, you really want to get slow into the corner but very quickly out of it. Your gains are in the corners, not typically on the straight lines. So that is why the negative caster or the positive caster or the neutral caster will have an effect on your camber and it will allow us and I'm going to demonstrate it to you to reduce the straight line driving camber or the static camber as I call it. We can reduce that if you have the proper caster setting. Now let's have a look on how that works. <music> I kind of made a kind of a fixture here just to show you uh, what the effect is of positive caster, negative caster and neutral caster. So the yellow marked uh, tape here is my upper ball joint, the blue one is my lower ball joint and the tube that goes between them is actually my upright and as you can see right now this is the direction of the car, nose is here. It is not leaning in any direction. If I turn it around like so, you can also see it straight up. So this is what we would call neutral caster. The blue disc is my wheel. Now I will have a certain angle that my wheel is pointing inwards or outwards. And let's say it should be pointing inwards because I want to have some negative um, camber. So there's a little gap there, so this is my camber. I'm not going to measure it because it's all plastic. It's a bit difficult, but you'll see the difference. If I now take my right-hander, really the angle of the wheel for my camber hasn't changed. It's still the same. And the wheel is still on the tarmac. It hasn't moved. If I measure this distance and I measure it, when it's out here, I'm just going to have exactly the same distance from the ground. So imagine that the ground, of course, is here. So the wheel has no lifting or raising effect. So with neutral caster, we can say that there is no effect on the camber and there is no effect on the height of the wheel. So the wheel has not been raised or been lowered when we turn. But now let's have a look on positive caster. So now I have changed my setup to positive caster, whereby the upper ball joint is now more towards the back of the car. 
the lower ball joint is more towards the front of the car. So my upright is tilting backwards. And of course, my wheel hub is still here. This is still as it was before. I'm still going to have a certain amount of camber. And you can see I created, you know, you can see that right here, a certain amount, maybe two centimeters or an inch of um, negative camber. But what's going to happen now if I turn the car? Now, it's a certain distance now from the ground, as you can see right here, right? So I can put like my fist under it. Of course, the tarmac would be here normally. If I now take a right hand turn, look what's going to happen. And I'm going to exaggerate, of course, but look how that wheel raises up tremendously, right? Look at this gap here now. This is huge. But also notice what happens with the camber. I got a little bit of negative camber here. While I'm moving the wheel upwards, I'm getting a whole bunch of camber. Let me just turn this whole thing around so you can actually see it. See how much camber we have now? Now let's have a look at what happens if we turn to the left. And this is my left front wheel. So I'm going to take a left-hander. I'm going to turn left. We all know that the weight of the car will transfer to the right-hand side, so everything will lean over. So the whole car is going to tilt to the outside. So if I turn, look what happens. The wheel is going down, which is really a good thing because we are having that weight transfer from the inner wheels to the outer wheels. And because now that suspension has been going down, that wheel is going down because of the positive caster, we're keeping that wheel really on the ground and this is where we want to have it. But also notice that the camber is changed. It's, it's less negative and that is just because that suspension actually went down. So to conclude, positive caster has a very good effect on camber and the positioning of the wheels in terms of height. <laughs>so far we looked on the caster and how it affects your cornering how it affects the straight line driving but we also looked on the effect it has on camber there is one more element we need to talk about and that's the kingpin inclination now the term kingpin comes from the old days where you had the old wagons pulled by a horse and the front axle was kind of a very stiff axle and in the middle we had a pin and that's the pin where the whole axle would rotate on this is what we call the king pin. So we use the same terms now on to the geometry of a car because there is a specific place where the wheel is going to turn on. And that's what we call the king pin inclination because we're talking about a very specific angle. So I'm going to show you a little simulation again of the king pin inclination and then see what this is going to do for us. So let me get that little model and then we can talk about it. So you are looking from the front of the car. So here is the nose of the car, left wheel, right hand wheel. And you, if you were to look on the top ball joint and the lower ball joint under which the upright, which is this tube here, is rotating, you can see that the blue ball joint is pointing more outwards of the car, from the center of the car, away from that, than the top one. And this is most likely creating us now this positive king point inclination. The king pin inclination is an angle defined by the line that is running through the upright, through the top ball joint and the bottom ball joint. And you've seen that before. But now we are looking from the front of the car. So this is the left hand wheel, this is the right hand wheel on this side. And you can see this is in a very specific angle. And this is what we call the king pin inclination. This specific one is a positive king pin inclination. If I turn this around like so to you, then really um, you see no difference. So now you're having a side view on the car. And if you remember what we talked about caster, this straight line here, now we have neutral caster. In reality, we would have something like this, right? So I just want to show you that the king pin inclination really has no effect in the length of the car as such in terms of angles. It is always seen from the front of the car and I think this is kind of important. So now let's see what happens with this. So if you're going to turn left or right, 
what's going to happen is that the wheel will come down if you turn to the left. We go straight, the wheel goes up. And if we turn to the left, the wheel goes down again. So in essence, while you're driving, you are going to lift the car if you turn left. You're going to lift the car when you turn right. And when you come back in a straight line, you're kind of lowering the car because this movement describes really an arc. And I know this sounds a little bit weird and a little bit opposite because an arc is like this, but and then the top would be this, the straight line position, but it is just the opposite on a suspension system. So in essence, straight line driving is, is okay, but once you turn to the left, you're going to raise the car because the, the wheel is getting closer to the ground, so you need to push up that car. And that takes effort, right, uh, while you drive. And it's okay when you turn, you have to have some effort on the steering wheel, but once you're coming out of the corner, you don't, want, you don't need a lot of force to put the car straight again. And this is exactly what the Kingpin inclination is helping you. It's very similar to what the caster angle, the positive caster angle is doing for you, the self-centering effect. So those two things work together. But there is another element that comes into the action or into the play, which is the camber angle. Now, I have quite some camber on this wheel here. Let me just put that up. And I'm just going to measure it for you. And I'm having right now six. It doesn't matter what it is. It's six, right? So if I now turn around like so, Now let's see what the camber is. So now look what happened. I don't have negative camber anymore. Now I have positive camber. I'm against the top of the wheel there and I have a space on the bottom, which is just the opposite as what I have here. And here we go. See the difference. So what we can say is that a positive kingpin inclination is really creating more positive camber or reducing the negative camber. So positive kingpin inclination is helping us out very much so like positive caster. It helps us in turning left or right and we have to put a bit of force up, but that's good. But the positive side is that once we let the steering wheel go, when we come out of a corner, we get a self-centering effect. Very much so like the positive caster. We also know that a lot of positive caster makes it heavy on the steering wheel. Now, because of the positive kingpin inclination, that compensates a bit for that heavy feeling that you could have on the steering wheel. The other effect we had with the positive kingpin inclination was that the camber is increased in the positive side. So we are kind of reducing the negative camber that we would typically have on our car. So if we make a right hand turn, the inner wheels, there we go in to reduce the negative camber. And on the outer wheels, we also go in to reduce a bit the negative camber because we are introducing a lot of negative cam uh, camber while we turn with the wheels uh, because of the caster angle, as you have seen before. So a lot of good things, but there's one more thing we need to talk about, and that is the scrub area or the scrub radius. So here we have our left wheel. We've got our kingpin inclination, as you can see, and we have a certain angle. And if I was to create an artificial line through that center, something like this, it's going to intersect with the ground there. If I put a center line straight through my tire, right in the middle, and let's see if I can get this out there. Hopefully you guys can see it. I'm just going to move this back a bit. We have two points, that point and the point right here. And this area between the two points is what we call the scrub area. And the reason we call it the scrub area, because the tire is going to be scrubbing the tarmac when you turn. Because the pivoting point is not in the center of the wheel. The pivoting point when you turn is around here somewhere. Right? This is where it turns. So 
with the largest crop area we are going to have more forces going onto the steering system so it's going to load that up a bit but we also will have an issue with braking so the bigger the scrub area is the more forces that will be applied on your steering actually when you brake because not both wheels are braking at the same level because the surface is different or whatever uh, or the tires are slipping a bit left or right so we are going to really put more force on that so you don't want to have a scrub area which is too big but we can't avoid it because there's a lot of stuff here the uprights and the discs and the brake calibers that's why we can't bring this whole upright close enough to the wheel or actually creating the uh, center point uh, a match between the center point on the wheel and a match of the actual kingpin inclination touch point now that would be ideal but that's kind of impossible to do so now we've come to the practical side where we're going to measure the caster and also the effect on camber and therefore you're going to need a couple of tools now it all depends if you do this quite often or not you can use different tools i do it at regular times so i'm going to use slip plates and i'm going to use a camber caster meter and then a special attachment for my kind of wheels let me give you a little bit of a close-up so you know what this is but don't be despaired um, there are other ways of doing it with some very simple home tools and i'll show you that in a second as i do measure my cars out quite often i'm having a kit for that but you don't need to have this kit you can do it with very simple tools which i will explain to you in a few minutes the idea is that you park the car straight forward onto slip plates these are slip plates basically two plates that move away from each other see that's so we will be able to turn the wheels left and right for about 20 degrees that's why these slip plates are called 20 degrees caster slip plates we'll adjust the setting here so whenever the car is on it i'm just going to set it up properly so that it's all pointing to the same area we lock it down and then when we turn the wheel you'll see this plate will actually do this and i'm going to turn it to 20 degrees and i have lines on this that will tell me when i'm at 20 degrees and then i'm going to do it the other side so that's what you need slip plates for the other thing you're going to need is a caster meter and camera meter uh, like this uh, which is very handy to measure both and i'll show you on how we're going to use this and then finally you're going to need an attachment for your wheels um, this is an aluminum bar with some metal i can hold it with some tie wraps onto my rims and i can do my measurement and of course my caster camera meter will go onto that now i understand fully that if you're not going to do this at regular times you don't want to invest in these tools because they are not very cheap they are quite expensive actually but you can make your own slip plates and i actually have two that i used in my early days and those are two plexi pieces with some silicon grease in between and guess what these are my slip plates it works like a champ so you can do this all you need to do get a couple of those just four of them two on each side of the wheel put some lines up for 20 degree angles that's not hard to draw the lines and then you can use this so this doesn't cost you much that's one thing the other thing you can use is as well then to create to measure the caster and to measure the camber is actually just a digital uh, builder's laser which will give you an indication in how many degrees you have really that's all you're going to need and potentially you're going to need as well a square angle like this so you want to have that as well and of course you will have to have a flat concrete patch or floor to do this work and because otherwise it's not going to be valid and that's true as well for the fancy tools or the el cheapo tools that you can use at home there's probably other methods you can use as well with ropes and so on but this is what i'm going to show you right now so let's go outside now and have a look on the car and then put the step plates up and then we'll actually do the work so first things first we're going to place these slip plates and we try to place them in the same place on both sides and so that the tires will properly fit on it now it's important that you drive the car in a straight line 
onto the slip plates. So make sure that the steering is straight. Have the car on the slip plates and double check both sides and that looks good. So with that in place, you can now see the line of the slip plate and it's three and I want to make sure it's three on the other side. And I'm kind of lucky because it is pretty accurate already. So I'm gonna move that a bit, make sure it's the same and lock it in place. I'm gonna turn the steering wheel a bit and then you'll see what the slip plates will do. See how they move. And now I can turn it until I have the right angle and we should be going for a 20 degree angle. But I'm gonna put it back straight because that's where I wanna start. I have attached my adjustment bar onto my wheel and I always go from rim edge to rim edge. Of course, you have to make sure that your rims are right. You can also do it on the central hub if you want, but I prefer it this way. So I'm gonna attach now my camera meter. I'm just going to try to get this level. So here's my little level part right here. So I'm just going to put that level. The middle indication is my caster. Don't worry about it right now. It's irrelevant. My negative camber is now like half a degree. I have no positive as you can see. So these are two different scales. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to turn the wheel 20 degrees to the left. So now the wheel is about 20 degrees to the left. So now we can check what happened with the camber. Do you remember when we were talking in the studio that turning left, so this is now the inner wheel, we are going to reduce the negative camber because of the positive caster. And look what happened, negative camber, zero. Positive camber, I got now one and a half. So this is what we get. So the next thing we're going to do now is to level the caster and then we turn the wheel straight again and then we know how many degrees of caster we have. So I need to adjust this. So it's exactly at zero. Make sure everything is set up right. All right, now I'm gonna turn the wheel straight again and then we'll check out how much caster we have. Okay, that's about it. So let's see how much we have. And we've got three degrees positive caster on this car. And we can do this on both sides and then we can adjust it if necessary. So what I've told you in the studio is exactly what is happening here when you're measuring these uh, dimensions of your caster and camber. Now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna turn to the right with the car. And remember I told you that the camber is going to increase so right now we've got half a degree negative, straight line. If I turn 20 degrees to the right, then that should increase quite a bit. Yeah. Okay, so let's check it out and see what we have. And I see it's one and a half degrees negative camber. It's not positive. So the outer wheel is gaining negative camber the inner wheel is gaining positive camber. That's what happens with a positive caster setting. If you don't have the fancy tools, if you don't have those fancy tools, you can use a normal level uh, that is used in building and then you can stick it onto your rims and measure that out what it is. So you obviously will have to have a mating part to hold it against and then you can check how many degrees basically you have, right? So this would be one method. The other method is that you use a square angle on the condition that you have a square floor. And then all you need to do is measure the distance on the bottom from the rim to the angle, this is six. And then on the top you do the same. And right here on the top I have seven. So now you can actually calculate this 
Uh, you know the diameter, you know the distances, so you can calculate the angle. So that would give you the uh, camber angle. And you can do the same once you turn the wheels. You can do exactly the same thing. So just to give you an example, just to be accurate. So on the bottom, I'm having right now, say, six. It doesn't matter what it is. And on the top, I have seven. If I turn the wheel 20 degrees to the left, so I'm now having an inner wheel. I can do the same. So in this position, if I measure the bottom part, uh, you'll see I have about eight. And on the top, we've got seven and a half. So now I have positive camber. So it got corrected, just like we've seen before. And you can calculate it again. If I turn into the other direction, we can also check it. Right? So you don't need to have fancy tools, but you need to have a flat floor, that's for sure. So let's check it. I have eight, and here I now have nine and a half. So that increased quite a bit, so but at least a half. So this is how you can measure those things. Now, how do you measure the caster? So you would adjust the metal until you have zero degrees, and then you would turn the steering with the right, and you would see it. So I'm not sure if I can do this now. So let me try. Okay, I got zero. Now we got zero. Let me turn it. I tried to hold it for you. Now I got three. So that's how you could do it. So uh, of course you would have to tie this down and make sure everything is properly in place. But that's the method to do it. Easy. And now you could go ahead and adjust the car if necessary. Now the point is, what do you adjust when you're on the track? Well, you have to drive the car around the track, and it's quite often very track specific. But if the driver tells you that the steering is very hard, um, then most likely you have too much positive caster. If at the same time, then he tells you as well, the steering is very hard. I, I got a lot of feedback on that. But the self-centering effect is no good when I come out of the corner and I have kind of like a understeer condition in the corner, because the car is jacking, then you have way too much positive caster, so you need to reduce it. If the car has a very light steering wheel with almost no feedback, then you have not enough positive caster. So these are all different conditions that we have already talked through in the video that would make you to decide to adjust the caster or not, if you can. And maybe you might want to change the kingpin inclination as well, together with the camber, because everything hangs together as we have explained. So, so folks, we've come to the end of this video, and hopefully I could explain you some basics on the kingpin inclination, the caster angle, and how it affects the camber, and overall how it's going to affect the handling of your car. Now, there are many different other factors that are still coming at play because a car is a three-dimensional vehicle. The suspension is quite complex. So I may not have touched all the little details, like, for instance, how the tire is deforming when you're cornering with it. Uh, there's many, many other aspects that we should look at. But so far, I think I covered those three main topics sufficiently enough for you to have a good understanding. And I hope to see you in one of my next videos. Bye-bye.